Good morning, my friends. Today it's a cloudy day. It was actually a lot darker about like a half hour ago. I'm not sure half in the clouds sort of drifted away, I guess. It was very, very um, sort of gloomy out, sort of spooky, very festive for the October month, especially as Halloween is approaching. As you can notice, my hair is getting very unruly lately. I'm trying to go through a phase where I can see how long I can grow it out. You know, I kind of want to see if I can rock a, a nice long flow of hair and because I haven't had it ever in my life really. I've gone long probably only once in my life and I was like seven years old and it wasn't even that long to begin with. It was probably um, a little bit longer than what it is right now. So I want to see how far I can go, see how long I can grow up my hair because I've never done it before and then eventually shave it all off, which is uh, my goal for this next year. So have my list here. I'm going to do another request topic. Uh, one of them was beliefs over practicality. So when we're talking about beliefs, these can range from anything from ideological to religious to uh, medicinal to political to anything really, right? And justifying those beliefs over practicality, over reason, over our ability to discern from what is the truth and what is false. And I think the reason for that is because we as humans don't really know what the truth is in a most vague sense. And we attribute ourselves to these beliefs, believing that they are truth, when we know, of course, that this truth that we are ascribing to isn't necessarily uh, a truth at all. It's more of a hypothesis or a theory. But in terms of ideology and belief systems, most of these theories aren't really theories. They're only uh, vague hypotheses that seem on paper to be based in reason, but usually are very, um, very flawed in a lot of their arguments. Of course, this is uh, something, you know, a philosophy student might know a lot more than me about, but I still think that if someone had figured out the meaning of life or the meaning of existence 2,000 years ago, we wouldn't be talking about it to this day. And if the truth of religions uh, were fully true, then again, the same exact thing. We would not even need to debate it. We wouldn't even need to discuss it. It would just be uh, a simple truth. And I think that's very important to discern that these truths that people like to profess aren't really truths. They're just uh, theories, in a sense. They're hypotheses, for the most part, as well. Even for something like atheism, um, is not a truth. It's not a lot of people like to say it is because they feel superior by stating that the same way a Christian might feel superior saying that they are one with Jesus and they walk with Jesus or whatever. It's the same mindset. The truth is we don't really know and a, a real scientist wouldn't disavow God. They might say I do not believe in God but they wouldn't sort of throw out the concept of it or at least a good scientist shouldn't do something like that because it's it's based in ignorance it's based in the concept that you know everything before you actually have the facts and i think that's a problem with a lot of uh the scientism that's going out in the world today where there's a lot of uh criticism towards various practices that happen in the world where they believe that they are not true um one of them being let's say acupuncture, for instance, all right, this is uh, an ancient uh, medicine that's been practiced in China for, you know, thousands of years, there is a basis of, you know, legitimacy that they have to follow. If you become a professional acupuncturist, you have to follow a sense of legitimacy, you get a certificate, there's a board, 
right? It's just like any other thing you do. If you want to be an accountant, you have to be a certified accountant. If you want to be an acupuncturist, you should become a certified acupuncturist. However, if you go on Wikipedia, Wikipedia is the, the guidelines of information. The first line, it says acupuncture is a pseudoscience. Pseudoscience meaning it's all in the mind. It's not real, um, which is a very ignorant thing to say, especially in the realm of science. If there's something that's happening in the world, there's a practice that people are doing and it's working. You know, people can profess to its abilities to help people. It shouldn't be ignored. One of the main things that scientists and doctors like to use is a placebo effect, which is just uh, a cop-out excuse. It's, a, it's an excuse to say this doesn't work, so it's a placebo effect, meaning basically it happened magically or it happened in the person's mind. You know, the person became healthy in their own mind, even though physically they're well in well-being it happened magically uh, you know they say it very scientifically to make it seem like it's a lot more legit legit but that's basically what it is is them professing that they have no idea how certain things happen and they do not want to admit it because scientists have a lot of ego and arrogance towards their realm of understanding things they believe once they discover something that it's the absolute truth when scientists discover the atom they professed arrogantly that, all right, this is the smallest particle in the universe. This is it. The atom is the, the basis for every mat, all matter in the universe. And then, of course, they were proven wrong when they just looked in a little bit closer and realized, oh, wait, no, it's made with protons and electrons. And then, oh, wait, no, there's actually neutrons in there. And now we're all even going further. Oh, no, they're actually made out of uh, quarks or whatever. You know, it, it just keeps going on and on. And that's the basis of a lot of science, which is very ignorant. Um, you know, a lot of them like to say, well, if we go into the path of hypothesizing and coming up with vague theories, we're going to end up, you know, professing to ignorance, right? You know, it's like when old alchemists believed that thunder was created by the gods and that you can turn lead into gold by doing magic spells and it's like okay fair enough but they forget to know that a lot of the experiments that these people did despite their um false pretenses about how the universe works and how the world works they still had some aspects that were true they still had some hypotheses that were real right and i think that a lot of that is ignored that the fact that these people were just thinking about these things they weren't and i think that's the concept where belief over practicality comes into play where belief um not in the sense of rigidly believing in something but being open to the concept of something new once you are rigid in the term of practicality and reason you stop being able to develop yourself and i think that's a major problem if you know, there was the rationale that we couldn't have electricity, that the concept of electricity was pseudoscience and it wasn't real, then we wouldn't have it today because people would say that's irrational, that doesn't make any sense. Or if we couldn't have cell phone towers or broadband internet, you know, if someone, if that was the mindset of science at the time where we said, oh yeah, anybody who thinks that is ridiculous they're stupid they're ignorant they don't know anything beyond reason or they don't know anything about reason then we wouldn't have things like cell phones and internet today because of that mentality and i think that's the same reason why a lot of science and the development of science is s slowly drifting downwards because we're entering a period where we're hitting a glass wall where we don't want to think beyond the scope of what we already know. We want to believe that everything that we've learned and discovered through science is the absolute truth. And that I think that's where the, the play between belief and reason need to work together, right? You need to have a belief. You need to sort of think outside the box in order to push the boundaries of where we can go as a species, but we also need reason to make sure we don't fall into pit pitfalls of uh, 
of actual pseudoscience, right? There is a lot of fake shit out there that has to do with metaphysics and esoteric magic and all that stuff. A lot of it comes in the form of uh, you know, stuff like energy work, stuff like stuff like acupuncture. There's a lot of fake acupuncturists out there. There's a lot of fake astrologists out there. There's a lot of all this stuff out there where people are not doing it based off of a real reasoned practical way they're doing it in sort of their own made-up fantasy which is a problem because you're dealing with stuff that already is sort of unknown and mysterious right so um it's a very complex thing to talk about because people don't want to have a balanced mindset when they look at belief versus rationality they want to sort of pick one or the other and think one is pitted against the other and one is evil and one is good which is the problem that people generally uh, seem to have with a lot of things. They generally want to pick a side instead of realizing that it's probably a balance between these two sides that actually make things work. And that's the same thing in politics, the left versus right. It's the belief of a perfect utopic society and the rationale behind that we need to keep things the way they are, otherwise we'll all go batshit crazy and kill each other. It's that same sort of dynamic that, that's going on right now in the political sphere, and they don't realize that you need both of them in order to just sort of function and to move forward and to grow. You can't be too much of a believer, because otherwise you might be wrong and kill millions of people, but you can't just keep doing the same thing over and over again because it's not productive for society. It's not going to help people in that same regard. Um, so anyway, those are my thoughts, and I hope you have a wonderful day.